Hey there, Nick Genetak is here. In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about why I am using Nurtree and Vim, and I'm really happy about it. So there's this stigma around Nurtree where if you use it, you must be some type of noob. You know, if you ever did a search for, you know, should I use Nurtree or Nurtree alternatives, you'll find all sorts of things like this, like this blog post here, like you don't need Nurtree or maybe NetRW, which is a built-in file explorer with Vim. And there's all these like Reddit posts and Hacker News posts about people saying that you shouldn't use Nurtree. Now, I think a lot of people just associate using Nurtree to using it to open files. And honestly, I don't really use Nurtree for that. Every once in a while, I kind of do for certain things, but uh, a majority of the time, you know, it's not for opening files. And in this video, I just want to showcase how I do use Nurtree and how, in my opinion, it does certain things that NetRW and other plugins just don't do. And these are things that I do all the time on a regular basis as a software developer. So let me just go ahead and open up this project here, which is uh, running in production static website with Jekyll. And you'll notice immediately when I open Vim in a directory, Nurtree comes up here. And you've seen this in a couple of my videos. But, uh, you know, if I wanted to open up a specific, I don't know, post or something like that, you know, I typically don't go to the posts folder and then I'll go to podcasts and then I'll just open up this podcast here with Nurtree. You know, that's not what I do in my day to day. You know, sometimes if I'm doing a tutorial video, it's a little bit easier to follow along if you do see this directory structure here and you know where to go because not everybody is using Vim and not everybody uses things like FCF and stuff like that. So it's just a little bit easier to visualize, you know, where to go to open a file. So that is one use case of, you know, why I actually do use Nurtree to open files once in a while. Um, but typically, you know, let's say if I, if I close this out and, uh, you know, if I want to open up a specific post or something, like if I knew I wanted to open up this preview post, you know, I'm just going to type in preview and then just immediately open it up with FCF. You know, I have a whole entire video dedicated to using FCF to find files, find strings within files, do finding and replacing with Vim. And uh, I'll drop a card up to link to that. So here's like the real, real, real main reason why I do use Nurtree. So right now, Let's say that you have this post that you're working on. Actually, even better, let me open up uh, a specific interview that I'm going to be publishing today. So I will go to my drafts folder. There's this one interview here, and I'm going to open that up in another split here. I have it open in another window, but uh, let me just close that out. Okay, so we have this one interview here from Marion, and I'm not going to try to butcher his last name, but uh, I just finished editing this interview today and I'm going to be posting it on the runninginproduction.com website. So, and this is this is really demonstrates a common use case of why I like to use Nurtree. So you can see here that I have this file open and it's selected in Nurtree. But let's say that I didn't have Nurtree open and let's say, you know, I jump to the bottom of the file here and it's like, boom, you know, I just finished editing the file. And now it's like, okay, it's in my drafts folder. And now what I'd like to really do is move this over to my posts directory, which will now inform Jekyll that uh, when I deploy the site, it is going to be live and it's no longer a draft. So if you weren't using Nurtree, uh, the steps to do this, like let's just say you're not using any type of uh, Vim plugins at all, well, the steps kind of would be, well, what do you need to do? So you'd have to like spawn a new terminal, right? And I understand you can run bang commands with Vim, right? but that's essentially the same thing, right? We, we need to basically run some type of Unix command here. Uh, and then we would need to do something like move, you know, drafts, interviews, 2009, 12, eight, seven, a site. And I would have to continue writing this file name. And of course, I totally understand there's little uh, commands that you can run in Vim to grab like, you know, the path from the buffer and copy it to like a clipboard or, or, or another register or something like that. I get that totally, but, and, and now it's like, well, what do you need to do, right? You'd have to like move this to your post interviews and then, you know, type out the name again, or again, paste it from uh, a register or whatever, if you used some Vim command to snipe out the path of the file. And now, you know, what would happen is if you were to do this, uh, the Vim buffer that you're actively working in right now, well, that's still going to point to the old uh, location in the drafts folder. So if you were to save this file, it would just get resaved to the drafts folder. So what you'd have to do is, you know, close this buffer out and then reopen the file or uh, 
perhaps like, you know, I've only been using Vim now for like nine or 10 months and I, I don't use these commands that often because I use Nerdry, but you know, maybe there's some command that you can do to like update or reload the buffer to its new location. But in either case, it's like, well, you know, let's just write this down. I had to do basically three things, right? It's like spawn a terminal or, you know, run some type of uh, Unix command, move the actual file, and then update the actual buffer. And, you know, that's not the worst thing in the world in this case, because it's kind of just moving it from one folder to another. But uh, this is kind of an annoying workflow, right? It's like, wouldn't it be nice if I can just hit a hotkey, put in a new path, hit enter, and have everything done for me? And that's kind of what Nerdtree allows you to do. So right now I'm going to hit leader N, which is a custom hotkey that I created here or a custom mapping, which is in my dot files, by the way. And uh, I am going to be going over that in a second. But notice here when I hit leader N, you know, for nerd tree, I like to associate that to N. It immediately jumped me into the interviews folder for this file. It basically expanded the tree and put me exactly in the right spot. So now all I have to do is hit MM which is a nerd tree default uh, bind for basically that says, you know, modify this node. And how do you want to modify it? Well, I want to move it. And we can even see here that there's some options here, like these things in parentheses are the short shortcuts that you can do. Now, like an idiot here, I'm going to hit my left arrow a million times until I reach the drafts folder. Maybe there's a quicker way to jump around. Haven't really looked into it too much, but all I have to do now is replace draft with posts and uh, I am done. So now if I actually go into my posts directory here and I go to interviews, we can see that this interview now has been, uh, it's been moved and we can see the path here. It's now in the posts. Now, one thing I do notice here, and this does happen to me all the time, perhaps there's a way to fix this in my vimrc file. I haven't really looked into it, but uh, I do need to basically just run the E command here. I guess that reloads the file or whatever. Uh, I actually don't know, sorry in advance, but you know, it just fixes the syntax highlighting for me. So maybe this is something I can fix in a vimrc file. If you know how to do that, uh, if you want to drop a comment in, that would be fantastic. But notice the workflow there. It's like now I, I can just hit uh, leader N to toggle nerdtree. And you know, now it's back in the posts folder under interviews, you know, where it needs to be. So that is like the number one use case for using Nurtry for me. It is moving files around. It's interacting with files. Like if I wanted to um, delete a file, let's say, you know, I would just do M and then, you know, I can just hit D here to delete the current node and that's going to delete it. Now, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to control C out of that. But uh, deleting files is something you typically do often. And it's like, well, I don't want to just, you know, open up a new Tmux window and then navigate to the directory and then delete it there or use some Vim commands to, um, you know, write out the whole path, like whatever. It, it's stuff that I just don't want to deal with, right? There's enough mappings and, um, you know, motions and commands that you can do in Vim. Like my, my brain only has so much space. I, I don't want to have to remember like the micro details to do things like that. Now, What's really, really, really cool about Nerdtree is, and I'm actually going to quit out of this. Uh, well, actually, before I quit out of here, I want to go over one other thing, and then we'll go into what I was just about to say. So the way I have FZF set up, uh, and that's the thing I use to basically search uh, and open up files. So let's just say that I want to open up, I don't know, maybe like the main assets file or something like that, right, for my style sheets. So this is the style sheet that I'm using. It's uh, using SCSS. You know, that's how I normally would uh, open files that I want to open. And I wouldn't even have Nerdtree open typically. But, you know, the way I have FCF set up is I use a rip grep. And again, all of that is uh, in that one video that I linked before. It goes over how to set all that stuff up. And rip grep is a, you know, a really efficient way to grep out files. And by default, what I do is I have rip grep to automatically not bother searching through files that are in my git ignore file. So if I do like a, you know, I have my, my, my FCF bound to control P because that's what I used to use for sublime. So that's just like built into my brain, but let's just say that I wanted to edit, um, like my git config file for this project. So, you know, the name of that file is called config, but notice here that it's not being shown 
in the FCF results here. I have an underscore config.yaml, but that's for Jekyll. It has nothing to do with my git config. So now it's like, well, you know, how could I edit my git config file? Well, I can do, uh, what is it, E, I guess, and then git config like this, and that works totally fine, you know, if I know the path to it, which I happen to do. But if this were a git ignored file in a really deep directory, I don't know if there's a, a good way to do that without uh, just having to type in or tap complete all the paths. Maybe there is a way. You know, again, I'm not a Vim wizard. I'm sure there is a way. But uh, Nerdtree comes in kind of handy for this because if you look here on the sidebar, you can see uh, git ignored files here. So if I just wanted to go to my config here and open that up, then it just pops me right into it. So, you know, that is something I do on a sort of fairly regular basis. So one thing, well, this project is not going to really show it. Actually, let me uh, kill this project here. And I'll just go to a, a, a different project here. I'll go to my courses for build a SAS applet flask. Okay. So, you know, when I'm dealing with uh, secret keys, like, you know, sensitive API keys, email credentials, stuff like that, you know, I typically have a .env file in my current working directory. And then I have a .env example file. And this example file, uh, you know, there's no sensitive information in here. It's basically just, you know, like documentation on what you can set. And then you're meant to copy this file over to .env. So like long story short, what I'm trying to say is, you know, I am once in a while editing files that are in my git ignore file because the .env file is git ignored, whereas the env example is not. But, you know, if I do a search for env here, it's not going to find the .env file because it's git ignored. So I use Nerdtree for that. Also, another, you know, and I kind of hinted at this before, another very useful feature of Nerdtree is just getting a visual representation of your code base. So if you're working on a brand new project, it's very handy just to be able to see all the, the files and folders and, you know, how they're all organized. And uh, for, for me, when I'm doing tutorial videos, like, you know, I have a course on Flask, um, a very long course, in fact, and, and, you know, it goes over like building this app up from a single app.py file all the way to what you see here. And, uh, you know, if you're trying to follow along, it's so much easier to like just be able to see where these files are located. Like it just helps you kind of learn where things are because most people are visual learners, myself included. Just having an empty buffer with no like way to even visualize how the structure is, is, is very difficult, right? It's like if you, if you don't have that nerd tree sidebar open and you just open up this project, it's like, I don't know, being thrown into like the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Like you, you have no idea what's below you. There could be, you know, sharks with lasers. There could be anything. There could be nothing there. You have no idea. Whereas if you have the nerd tree open, it's like you get to see everything. It's, it's crystal clear. So now that other thing that I wanted to talk about here, I should have did a quit all there. Please don't kill me in the comments. Um, and this is another really nice feature of, of Nerdtree is, you know, let's say, let me just make a directory uh, in my temp directory and I'll just do test, like test Nerdtree, right? And then I'll go into here and I will do a little bit of, well, actually, let me just touch like a hello.markdown file here or something like that. And I'll just go into Vim. So right now, you know, Nerdtree, since I opened up the directory is open here. But, you know, let's say I want to create a folder here and, you know, a nested folder here, or let's just say a file in a nested folder. And I don't know, let's just say we can hit M here to modify and we're going to add a child node. And let's just say this is like a lid folder. And um, geez, I don't know what we're going to do. This is like off the top of my head right now. We'll do lib components and then like, I don't know, let's just make an like, like an apple.py because why not? So when I do that, what happened was, you know, the lib folder got created inside the components folder and Nurtree kind of does what GitHub does, where it just rolls up uh, the paths here, where if there's no files in the lib folder directly, you know, it doesn't waste a space. And here I have apple.py and, you know, I don't know, write apple code, right? And, you know, so much magic, not magic, but so many cool things just happened here. So this apple.py file now exists in lib components apple.py. But, you know, if I weren't using Nerdtree, what would I what would I need to do? Like, there's a lot of stuff that I would need to do, right? I would need to first, you know, run some type of Unix command to do like a make dir p on lib components because I'd have to make the directory. And then I'd have to, you know, basically, you know, edit lib components, uh, you know, 
apple.py to create the file and then Vim would open it. Again, there might be more efficient ways to do this with Vim. I don't really know because Nerdtree has been doing it great. And at some point in the future or some point in the past, I should say, you know, I did try to look up these things with Google because, you know, I kind of hopped on board with the, well, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't use Nerdtree. You know, maybe all these people are right and there's better ways to do it. But I did a lot of research and I have not found anything that kind of, you know, is even close to being as as efficient as Nerdtree is for doing things like this. You know, you can make these nested directories without having to worry about using make derp. You can put files in them. You can just create directories themselves instead of files. So if I wanted to just go here and make a new directory called like hello, all I have to do is just make sure that the last character is a forward slash. And we can see here, you know, directories end with a forward slash. So now it's like, okay, cool. I have a new directory here. And if I want to delete that, I can just do MD, which is like modify the node and then delete. And now I can just hit yes. And uh, in this case, I'll do it here. But now it's like, well, since the directory is not empty and we can see that here, it's like, cool, I can just type in yes. And um, you know, that apple, that pi file was deleted. And actually the components file was deleted or the components directory was deleted as well. So. You know, these are just some things that you can use with Nerdtree, but, um, and we can see here, like this file is no longer available. Okay. So now there is one other thing I want to just show you here. So I'm going to open up my vimrc file, which uh, I actually have a bind for, which is in my, my vimrc. I'll, I'll make sure to link to my dot files here. But if I do a search here for Nerdtree, you can see here, it's just a plugin that you install. I happen to be using plug. And if I go down here, you know, these are all of the settings related to Nurtree. So I do like to have show hidden equals to one because, you know, I do want that files and folders to be shown in the sidebar. You know, that's how I can easily access my get ignored files and, and other uh, dot files that might be in there. And then also this one is a nice one, auto delete buffer. So when you rename a file from, you know, A to B, you know, Nerdtree is automatically going to reload the buffer to the new one. So if you were to save the file right after that, it is going to be saved in the new one instead of the old one. You know, we saw an example of that before. And now here is one pretty nice thing. So I definitely didn't write this myself. I was Googling around and I found it somewhere. Possibly I modified something to make it a little bit nicer for the, uh, for the workflows that I'm used to doing. I forgot. It's been, it's been a while, but um, yeah, you can see here this bind just is how I do leader n. So, you know, this leader n bind, it opens Nerdtree at the current file, or it also closes Nerdtree if pressed again. So this basically acts like a toggle, right? I don't need to have to worry about multiple keys here. And, and right now this, this uh, vimrc file is actually in my github.files folder, which is then sim linked to the vimrc file in my home directory. But you can see here, I'm just hitting leader n, leader n, leader n, and it's just toggling it. So it's pretty nice. And you know, it makes sure that it always, always, always puts you in the correct file, like whatever the active file is that you're editing. So if I happen to have the tmux to config open instead, and now it's, you know, tmux is, is highlighted instead of the vimrc. So if you take a look here, yeah, I'll make sure to leave, leave a link to my dot files in the description because I don't think you want to type this out manually. But you know, this is this is really it. There's nothing else in my config file to make Nerdtree work or act differently. And I really do think that is it's it's a beneficial plugin to have if you are doing things like moving and creating and and deleting files. And as a software developer, you know, those are things that I do on a regular basis. So you probably do too. Um, yeah. With that said, thanks a lot. If you have any comments, you know, are you using Nerdtree? Let me know in the comments below. If you're not using Nerdtree and you hate it, or you know an alternative that lets you do the same things as Nerdtree, but with like some like lighter weight plugin, sure, please leave a comment. Although, you know, I'm not unhappy with Nerdtree. You know, I use it and it's not a regret. And uh, on that note, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one.